of the concert committee, and they're the most well-funded organization, at least that USG is associated with out of all of them. But there are a couple of these that receive some incredible raises here. Uh, mm -hmm. The Black Student Assembly got a $20,000 raise. Their original budget was forty-five grand, so now they're at sixty-five grand. The Asia Pacific American Students Assembly, they got a $13,500 raise, so that'll put, put them well over $70,000. The Academic Culture Society received a $7,000 raise to add to their already 38 grand budget. Trojan Pride also went from 25 grand to 29 grand. And a lot of these organizations, Trojan Pride though, I think a lot of times they have interesting events, but the, the Black Student Assembly, Asia Pacific American Student Assembly, or APAS, APAWS, and the Academic Culture Society, I mean, that's a lot of money spent on culture, if you will. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but do enough students take part in the events that APAS holds in the Black Student Assembly to spend a combined 150 plus thousand dollars on those organizations. What's your take on that? Do you want to speak about it? Yeah, I'll speak to that. Um, I think it's it's not something that we should criticize because the fact that we are a well-funded school shows what a great university we're at and the fact that we fund our most, you know, our student organizations, including our cultural student organizations, and give a place to everybody or as many people as we can um, so that they can come together and feel like they have a sense of identity, they have other people that are, you know, they can relate to and um, support them. The problem with that, I feel, is that um, when you break it up into various cultures, you isolate other people. And I think this goes back to my point about advertising. I would love it for, for those organizations, and it's not like really my place to tell them what to do, but I would love it for those organizations to spend some of that money towards making themselves more visible on campus. Because I would love to learn more about what APA is doing on campus. I think that they probably put on some incredibly... Um, incredibly impressive per events that I would take part in even though I don't really identify as part of that community um, right. and I think that that would really that would really uh, bring the diversity in our campus um, it would highlight it because one of the things is that, you know, we, we should definitely have these organizations. And I think that you make a good point that, I mean, the Black Student Assembly, Asian, APAS, a lot of these other cultural organizations are crucial to, to this campus because we are an incredibly diverse student body and people need a place to go and and be able to access those resources that's very important my question though is do they need 65 plus thousand dollars to do it and if they do though do we have enough money to fund organizations or at least legislation that will affect more students like for example lion center renovations or more field space for sports because for me that that would be a big deal and and also one of the questions i would have is cromwell for example i mean do you think we might be able to allow students to practice there a bit more often? Like, how would you spend this money if you were the president, would you say? Is this how you would do it, or would you allocate it to a more diverse and, and broad base? Well, yeah, um, I, I, first of all, I do commend USG for what they're doing um, in terms of, like, you know, all these little assemblies and stuff like that. It, um, I think it shows their dedication to diversity and how they want people to feel more inclusive and stuff like that. So, yeah, I probably would have done some um, something like that. But then again, you also got to realize that um, some of the stuff that you're talking about, like the Lion Center, the Rainy Library, and all those kind of stuff, those stuff can come from the university. I mean, the university got, what, just last year, about $200 million from Don't Sign, which is unrestricted. They can do whatever they want with it, I you know? know. So know. there could be more advocacy on that <laughs> and to, like, you know, where the money goes and just maybe leave USG's money alone um, to really focus on students and stuff like that. So there is a lot of risk, um, very, a lot of on top, uh, what was it called, resources that could be tapped into um so yeah it's not just the usg no oh, it's USC not just it's not just a, usg yeah. and that's one thing that i also said like you know usg i think they already have like a fundraising board i think they could really need some fundraising or maybe do some fundraising you know um i know a lot of schools do it um i did it when i was a student body president right uh, so um and, you know, the president of the student government sits on the, um, what's it called, is invited to the alumni association um, meetings and stuff like that. So it doesn't hurt to be like, hey, you know what, that's what we're trying to do. I think awesome. it looks pretty neat. Yeah, so I'd be hesitant to say that I would take away funds from these incredible organizations. But what I would say is that a, a huge function of what USG should do is communicate with the university about the students' needs. And I feel like that may be where there's a disconnect. Um, and where 
the university does not is not receptive to the students' needs, I think USG needs to think about ways to change around its budget to fit those needs. So maybe take a little bit out of here, a little bit out of there, and maybe, you know, try to find space for, let's say, the dancers that we talked to during our campaign period who are professional dancers and they don't even have a mirror to dance in front of. Um, or let's say... Um, Speaking to the PED building about how it's going to renovate so that ROTC kids have a good space for next year. They're very concerned about how it's going to be remodeled. You know, just just making those connections on campus to the different groups that maybe aren't as large or all encompassing as the Black Student Assembly or something like that. Right. Well, one of my favorite things that needs to be done is a little bit of air conditioning to be put inside the physical <laughs> education building because I took a theater class in there and now I'm taking a basketball class. And there's no reason why we have to open up the windows like it's the 1960s and pretend that we, I mean, air conditioning in the physical education building goes together like right. peanut butter and jelly. You and know what I mean? And that's going to be renovated, so I'm not really sure how it will be renovated, but it does at this point seem like a very all-purpose building. You said the theater kids are using it. The theater kids are often having to go off campus to find spaces. To, we are USC. How many actors come out of this school? I mean, no, I hear you loud and it clear. doesn't make sense that we... We don't allow our most creative students space to work. We, we're, even though they're creative, they shouldn't have to imagine their workspace. And it's not but, necessarily about taking money away from these organizations. I mean, I said that these, I mean, the um, APAS got a $13,500 raise. So we are raising things. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. just lessen the raise a little bit. We have a little bit of extra money to, uh, to, to actually do some of the things that we were just talking about. But, to Thea, you were going to chime in on something here. Well, yeah, I, I was just going to touch a little bit on uh, what's it called, what Kyle was saying. I said, uh, during the campaign trail, like I said, we met a lot of incredible people and incredible um, groups. And one thing we came across was um, a dancing group. And they were, like, you know, dancing um, by the ROTC building over there. And um, they were saying something like, you know, for them to practice and stuff like that, you had to pay about $29 an hour to practice at a Lions Center. What? Twenty nine dollars an hour. Yeah. So you know, this all stuff that um, I think USG could be looking into because, um, like I said, it's like our uh, most creative, uh, what's it called, um, students putting their talent into use and stuff like that, and yet they do not find a place to like you know. I mean, um, yeah, I think that maybe the programs that USG is doing are great, but USG also needs to be defending the students against getting nickeled and dimed all the time. Yeah, absolutely. It is the student government, last I checked, not just a branch and arm of the, uh, or front of the USC administration. That's, that's why we have a student government to voice these grievances. So anyway, thank you for helping me sort of throw all this money madness, if you will. And uh, thank you <laughs> guys welcome. for coming on Conrad's Corner. Yeah, thank Fight you. On. Okay. When we come up next on Conrad's Corner, we have the interview with Carla Robinson. Find out what that's all about. Aspiring, emerging singer, songwriter, country rock coming your way. In just a couple moments, this is Conrad's Corner, USC's only news radio talk show.